Hello everybody, welcome to the podcast. This is the Macha Man coming to you from home, I guess. Yeah, lah. Each each other's home. Where else are we going to be? It cannot, right? I mean, you know, it could be so many places. We are not. We are not the ministers to <laughs> simply be able to go around and 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 do things wherever we want to do. No, and we actually have point. to follow rules. That's actually a very good point. Uh, we are not ministers. And even if we are given the opportunity to be ministers, I don't think we won lah. Not no lah. It's okay. It very quickly became uh, the most uh, lucrative job in Malaysia. Yes. To yes. to the most uh, hated job in Malaysia. No. Anyway, uh, back to the podcast. A lot of people. No need. I, I I just wanted to ask your opinions or your your views about the people who are every day, every day in my Facebook, my Instagram. When la next episode? When la next episode? Can you please uh, answer them? Uh, y'all can go. Sharam, go to hell. I think wow, that is the first down, thing. Uh, oh no, that's not what you wanted, ah. Uh. <laughs> no, no. Uh, <laughs> a bit less, ah. Uh, Kena. Uh. Oh, just dial it back a little bit, little bit, ni. Oh, I see. Uh, uh, kill yourself, no. <laughs> oh, no. I, I, I said dial it back, ah. Uh. The other way, the other way. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Now, oh. I'm just saying, take matters to your own hands, lah. That's what. That's, oh, okay, what, okay. that's what I meant. This no no no. I also sometimes I get, uh, and look, like Kavin and I, we really appreciate it. We really really do, and it, it gives us a bit of a laugh to see that lah. You know, the yeah. first time. Yeah. The, the first, first time. First ten times lah. For me, the first time I was done with it already. Oh, okay. Okay. okay so well, yeah, so so for all of y'all who are commenting, and I know I know I also see, uh, y'all just. Wait lah, it, it, the show is free, you know. So shut up lah. <laughs> <laughs> also, the fact that look, it's MCO is very difficult for us to communicate. And no, I keep telling you, Kavit, stop making excuses. We need to. This is what we need to do. Okay, we need to abuse our fans like this. We need ah, to yeah. scold them. That that this that's is, what this, they like. This is how we lose fans, you know. This is no, this is exactly how lah. You have to understand the the matcha men fan base are all masochists, you know. So they <laughs> they want us to like. Step on them, daddy. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, lah. So, uh, we start off with the usual matcha news. Today, no intro music song, all lah. No need, uh, lah. No, we don't have guess what you want me to do. I can do for you. Do lah. Stop, 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 stop. Oh, sorry, what? Stop, stop. What? what? I regret. We what? just, that, that we was just good one. We just it's go like through the news. Lah. You know, you sound like you were. The the starting notes of a uh, kung fu fighting. You know? <laughs> 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 ah, yeah. It really sounded like that. Okay, so okay. today's news, mm-hmm. little bit special, little bit unia, comes from Malaysia. Ah, and comes from as of this recording, yesterday. Oh, okay. All right. Mm. So uh, the news is, man got caught having sex with goat near Rawang. Okay, so animal so, now dead. That is the headline. Yeah, that's the what headline. is the point of the story? Everything is there. But that, that's the headline. Man this got is... caught having sex with goat near Rawang. Near Rawang, ah. Near Rawang, not in Rawang, lah. Mm-hmm. So it's the outskirts of Rawang. Adjacent. Greater Rawang, as they call it. Greater Rawang, ah. <laughs> the, the 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 off Rawang. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jalan <laughs> off, coming <laughs> to Rawang. So okay, so man caught having sex with goat. Yeah, caught like he was okay. Okay, okay. I yeah, don't know. We'll okay. see. We'll see I'm the story. I'm digesting the the headline as we go. It's from Mele Mele, by the way. I have to I have to give the sauce. It's from why why must it be a racial thing? No, the 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 name of the newspaper is Mele Mele. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Not a Mele Mele. Are you are you serious, sir? <laughs> ah, uh, yeah. I is I'm telling you all right now, uh, listeners. Now it, it's not going to be a good episode. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's already okay. off the rails, sir. Uh. Okay, from the the Malay mail. Uh, it's okay. So man caught having. I don't sex know what race goat. he was. Okay, I say man caught having sex with goat. Uh, goat now dead. Yes. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. So, uh, a sixty-year-old man. <laughs> okay. Has been arrested by the police for bestiality with a female goat here at Kampung Buaya Serenda, Rawang yesterday. I don't know whether to be happy that it was a female goat. I'm not happy, lah. 
I mean, it would it would have. I don't know if it would have been worse if it was a male goat. Yeah, I think what you should do, as I say this story, ah, uh-huh. uh, is don't be happy lah with anything that is okay. happening. <laughs> I think it'll be very bad for your PR. I, yeah, I have yeah, a feeling. I, not not happy like, Happy was the the wrong word to use at that point. But more uh, like you know, less sad. Again, <laughs> <laughs> any other emotion other than disgust, I think. Uh, okay, okay. It won't so, go well down in your social. So at least it's a female goat. Okay. Uh, it's, okay. Wow. You, that doesn't. Okay lah. I. You know what? You, at the minimum lah. At the minutia of it. Ah. Uh, You and your PR manager handle it, lah. I got nothing to do with this. Okay. <laughs> okay. Pay the flu a uh, lot of money, ah. Uh, the flu. You're uh, not doing a job. Here at Kampong Boya, Sunanda, Rawang. Yesterday, yesterday, I mean July twenty eighth, lah. Okay, so it, it literally okay. was yesterday as the, at the time of this recording, right? So, Kulu mm-hmm. Slango Police Chief Superintendent Arsat Kamarudin said a forty five year old complainant, who mm-hmm. is the goat's owner, okay, right, lodged a report at the Sunanda Police Station around six twenty four p.m. That that police report has got to be like uh, the I wanted to be I want to be the fly in the wall in that police report. Uh. Yeah, like just just showing up in the in the police station like a kenapa puan ah so kambing saya kena rogol kena 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 kongke kena kongke ah so ah uh, uh, sorry sorry ah uh, puan tadi cakap kambing ah puan ah kena kongke Ah, kambing, 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 kambing ternakkan saya. Oh, the, oh, <laughs> bukan kan, uh, bukan kambing liar. Ah, eh? uh, no. <laughs> oh yes, ah, uh, Rawang has a problem with wild goats. Ah, uh. I didn't know. There's <laughs> a gang of a roving gang of wild goats, is it? Can Can you imagine that 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 police officers day the whole day is taking reports about you know abuse about yeah. you know uh, MPs saying things in parliament. Yeah, and and comedians making jokes. Ah, uh, the whole the whole day they have to go and write reports of someone getting uh uh their feelings hurt online. Ah, uh, ah, uh, and then suddenly this woman comes in and goes. But Hello. don't you think because of you know how this country's favorite pastime is doing stupid police reports for no reason? Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, yeah. don't you think this would actually have like broken the monotony a little bit? For the no, I, I'm very sure the policeman would be like, "Oh, thank God, lah, it's coming," you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he would have felt like he he would have both felt sad and uh, 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 grateful to the goat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's just that that you know, he he thought coming was another MP at first because you cannot keep track already, right now. You cannot keep track. Like coming is which constituency, ah. lah. Ah. Okay. So at, <laughs> uh, at around six twenty-four uh, p.m. on the twenty-seventh, lah. So his news came on twenty-eighth. So on the twenty-seventh, following the discovery of a half-naked man in the goat pen behind her house. Okay. Okay. Again, I don't know whether to be less disgusted or not that he was yeah. half-naked and not fully naked. It might be weird, lah, as it goes on. All right. Okay. Mm. According to the complainant, the owner heard bleating coming from the goat pen located behind the home at around one thirty p.m. Now this is my issue. Why this fella had to do in the afternoon? That's why. I mean, wait till night, lah. This is the middle of one thirty. You know, lunch time not yet finished. Like, no, lunch time just finished. You know. That's why. I mean, like, how horny do you have to be, like, to for you to go have lunch and then go? You know, I need, I need, I I need a goat lah. Right now, I'm I'm more concerned that he was going to do this first and then go and have lunch. You know, <laughs> I think that's I'm worse. I'm hungry and I'm horny. I wonder which one. Ah, which one? I first? address first. Like I'm very sure, right? If he didn't get caught after that, the floor would have gone ahead mutton. You know. Well, fair enough. I mean, you know, that that would be the ultimate, like kink, I guess. I yeah. To fuck I, a goat I, and then have mutton curry afterwards. People are messed up, lah. People are I messed up. I guess lah. I I don't know. I okay. Look, when I say ultimate kink, I I do not speak from experience. Just, just I mean, so I know. don't think anybody listening to this believes that statement. Uh, my kink is to actually have sex. Ah, uh, one day. No, no, no. I don't think anybody believes that you don't have experience in these kind of things. That's what I mean. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. I uh, think the I think the I think our listeners now they have a good kind of a good idea of what type of person you are, lah. Oh, okay. Actually, my story also got 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 similarity. I I why? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. When she went to check, she saw a half-naked man getting up beside her goat. He was a local whom she was acquainted with. Ah, 
So there was a time, yeah, that when she came out and she saw the guy and she just looked at him and said, "Halim, what are you doing, Halim?" Ah, uh-huh, yes. <laughs> no, her and brain jack first a bit, no. And also Wait, read back the is... sentence again. Okay, when she went to check, she saw a half naked man getting up beside her goat. He was a local whom she was acquainted with. So she was he was getting up beside the goat. Beside so this the was, goat. This was post coital lah. So I, he's going for a little bit of a cuddle lah. I would assume so. Yes. So yes. He, he's like you know he's like he's he, this was the after after coitus. Mm. Right? And then after that he's like you know getting up beside the goat like is it good for you? No, you see, yeah, yeah. I, I maybe that's what could have happened. Either way, the goat had no say in anything that's going on right now. I mean, he was bleating. He was not happy. <laughs> okay. I, I'm very sure. I'm very sure the goat did not give consent. No, of course not. The suspect subsequently escaped. The goat was pronounced dead by the owner when she checked. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Right. So that's. Okay. I mean, that's not right, lah. Okay, lah. That's not right, lah. Okay. That's you know what? Right, <laughs> Okay, now no, there, there, no more less disgusting. Ah, <laughs> okay, now anyway, bad, it was right? in the headline. Goat pronounced dead, but you know, I didn't. Okay, you know, he's hitting you now. <laughs> it, little bit lah, little bit. You know, you know when you read the headline, you're like, ah, yo, this is cute, and then you read it and you're like, no lah, bro, no. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Arsad said in a statement today, based on a tip off, the police team from the Hulu Slango Criminal Investigations Department. So these people had to take time out of their day to do this, no? Not like they're going to do anything else. Like the CID I mean, located the, CID? the suspect. <laughs> CSI CSI Rawag. CSI Kambing. Goat got fucked. Uh. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> That's the opening scene. No? I guess it was a bad day. I okay. Yeah! No. Okay. No. no, we can we can end the podcast here already. Enough. Okay. Thank you. I Thank don't you think anything can top that. I doubt. <laughs> uh, located the suspect who was found hiding among dense shrubbery <laughs> along okay. Jalan Tengah Kampung Sungai Boya Surenda around 10:50 a.m. today. Okay lah, at least at least he felt guilty enough to hide in some uh, brushery. He he, you see, uh, the fellow escaped the day before in the afternoon, and then and then on the twenty on the twenty seventh, and then on the twenty eighth morning they found him hiding in shrubbery. Do you think he was hiding there the entire day? He, or he went home he first. Was, he was talking his next victim. Oh, uh, like an ox or something. A squirrel. Maybe who knows? Right. Arsad said the forensic team from the Slango Police and the, the Kuala Kuku Baru <laughs> Veterinary <laughs> Department. So this is a this is now a multi-departmental issue uh, because of this, right? Yeah, I mean, look, the the this I mean, the, this becomes a full case of CSI, lah, because you know they have to go to the forensic team. They'll do the you know the the machines or and the. Then the what the criminal psychologist will come along that this man is uh, five foot two. His mm. uh, his mother is uh, a female. They and, will bring uh, in cyber security experts for no reason. Uh, you know, <laughs> they got nothing the, to do to check the MCO, goats. Uh, right? To check the goat socials. <laughs> see see whether there was any uh, evidence of stalking. Or not. Right. Uh, to come and assist, he added that the goat was also sent to the veterinary department's laboratory for a post-mortem. Okay. Right? Arsat okay. said that the case had been solved following the suspect's arrest and subsequent remand at the session's court tomorrow. I don't think it was that big of a solve. Lah. No, lah. I mean, look, it's MCO. Huh? They'll, take any, they'll take anything. Okay. okay. They'll, they'll take credit for whatever. We solved I mean, the case. Case closed. Janji, it's a win. Lah. Ah, uh, then you know like the music will come on lah. They close the case and then, dun 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 dun. What the hell? I music? I, I I I can't remember. Somehow or rather the opening dun came up, oh. and then after that I lost it. So yeah, that's what happens. Ah uh, yeah, the case is being investigated now under section three seven seven and section two eight nine mm, of the penal states, code. Fucking a goat is wrong. Yo. I mean, uh, actually correct. Yes. For committing sexual acts against the order of nature and negligence with respect to any animal. Oh, okay. 
So okay, so that means there is a law against having sex against any. Uh, I would assume so, lah, bro. Otherwise, I don't think we sh- we uh, should be allowed to call ourselves a country. I mean, look, the fact that we have a law and people are, I mean, to so that people don't do it shows that you know how backwards we are anyway. No, no, that that is almost every country in the world. So that is not just a Malaysia thing. I think that is a human species thing, which is why no, no, we I need. I know countries. Uh, I know countries that that have, allow. No, not allow, but they don't have a law against it. Which countries are this? Uh, which which white man country is this, Kavi? No, no, white man. Wait, is it white man? Yeah, it, some uh, Eastern of European. Of course it is. Of course it is. Some Eastern European. I think. Of course, yeah. I'm I'm not sure. I'm not. I don't want to simply say. I don't want to simply name countries now. Okay. And then get letters. No, I'm very sure it's. Uh, first of all, I will I will go on on a limb and say any country that doesn't have this law is a Western country. Okay. Because Asians have brains. Okay. Sure, 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 sure. All right. I mean, China has very lax laws on animals, but go on. They will do everything else with animal except this. <laughs> China. If there's any country that needed tighter laws, it's China. Ah, <sighs> yeah, lah. Good. That's a good point, lah. Uh, uh, so yeah, la, so uh, F in the chat la, for the good, uh, yeah, F in the chat for the good, and uh, yeah, thanks. For I that. think thanks everybody's for day was affected, you know, <laughs> by, by that thing, <laughs> by that whole issue. I know, I know for a fact that this story has been going through the social medias. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, because I mean, let's face it, la, this is this. I, I, I saw the, I saw the gist, I mean, not the gist, I saw the headline, but I didn't read it. Uh, but I because I knew you were gonna bring this up for <laughs> Macha News, and also the fact that uh, what do you call that? I, when I saw it, I'm like, yeah lah, Of course, this will be viral because you know nothing else is happening in Malaysia. Yeah, I mean, this is still this is still better than it's it's bad. It's very bad, but it's still slightly better than Parliament by 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 a mile, by a country mile lah. Yeah, yeah. So having said that. Yeah, so F that's in the chat that for F in the chat for the goat. That is the matcha news. That is the matcha Please news. But take care, take care of your animals, guys. Don't ah, lock up your goats, lah. Lock up your goats. Please keep yeah. your goats aside uh, away and from also, Rawang. If, <laughs> also, if you do have a goat in Rawang and you cannot move, uh, why? And then second yeah. of all, to top the aurat, lah. To top the aurat of the goat. Of the goat. Of the goat. No, you see, this is a don't problem nowadays. Don't simply go let your goat hang around half naked around the... No, that is not the goat's fault. You see, you are falling into the trap of what the patriarchy I'm wants to do I'm also being sarcastic, la, bastard. No, no, no. You see, you're falling into the trap. What we need to do is, from a very ah. early age... Okay. We need to educate young boys... Okay. To not stick it in the farm <laughs> Wow. Okay, if, if we are not supposed to stick it in farm animals, who asked them? Who asked them to be so sexy? Okay, all right. So <laughs> I'm announcing this is my last podcast. From the You've announced Man. that since episode three. Okay? I think yeah. so. I I we actually are yes. episode thirty four right now. Yeah, and yeah. Still here. Okay. I'm. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for your listenership. Uh, and also, you, can... you guys can't see the video today, right? But Zach, uh, Zach uh, I, I keep doing the stupid thing with Zach now. I keep calling you Zach. Mm. But Kiran is completely naked, uh, by the way, in the video. No, I'm not. I'm only topless. You're half naked, lah. Okay. I'm half. Okay. I'm half naked, yeah. Ah. Like the which is, no, la. which is okay for you, lah. So once I quit the show, you can do the next podcast with this half naked fellow who got caught or so. <laughs> 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 then you and him can share your your views. His only view will be goat related, ah. I, I I'm sure you can accommodate. I'm very you, sure you can. His his matcha news will be top ten sexiest goats in Malaysia. Uh, Number and one, you, you will add two Man. more. You will add two more, bro. That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> Anyway, okay, so my story is uh, is it's a long one. This is a long one. That's what she said. Well, that's what they keep saying, but then mm. they find out later lah that it's ah. not that long. And then uh, they're disappointed. Yes, but no. Hey, listen, okay, it may not be long, but it's thick. Ah, ah correct. Yeah, Murtaba. Uh, hey. I remember. Ah. Murtaba, Murtaba. <laughs> Murtaba, yes. Uh, anyway, so starts off with Sunny Ang Su Swan. 
Okay. Okay, was okay. born in 1939 in the British colony of Singapore, Malaya. Later renamed Malaysia since 1963. Right, Sunny Ang Su Suan was, a mid, uh, was from a middle class family, smart but reckless. Huh. Ang was English educated and went to school since young. As opposed to going to school since old. Since old, yeah. <laughs> I know went, right, to, went to school since young. Okay, but that sounds like something an uncle would say, you know. I know. Since young, like, you went to school. Uh, my uh, children have been going to school since young. Then when else are you, you going to send them to school, uncle? They, as, well, they're 35. Uh. Like, uh, now they go to school. Uh, so, yeah, he, he, he went to school since young. With an IQ of 128. Okay. Ang was shown to Out be... Of- a, I don't think there's an upper limit to IQ. Oh, that's not how IQ works, huh? I don't think... I don't know, you know. That's the thing. Like, okay. Because um, I know it's a scam, but like 128 out of... What? Like, <laughs> I never understood how those numbers are supposed to impress me. The, the higher it is, the higher your IQ, which means the smarter you are. Like, for okay. instance, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Einstein was 154. Okay. Something like that. Right? Uh... Average is about 80, 80 to 90, I think. Okay. Right? Ah. So, yeah. So, 120 is pretty above average. Lah. I mean, okay. Lah. I, I, even though almost all IQ tests have been debunked and disproved, but sure, 128. No, it's only debunked and disproved nowadays with the, the snowflakes. Oh, you, you can't call people. No, no, no. They did this a long time ago already. Oh, yeah. I mean, they like, a lot of them said like, uh, all this Mensa stuff is quite crap. Huh? Fuck, I go 148, you know. It means nothing. First of all, you well, didn't. Now you tell me lah. And it then means nothing. I'm bragging about it. Yeah. And 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 the reason they do that is because for the people who brag, those are the ones who don't get invited to parties. Okay, that explains a lot about my childhood. Uh. Ang was shown to be extremely intelligent and always had been among the top 10 uh, students in school. Okay. When young lah. Mm, when young. Okay. Since young. Yes. Now, since uh, young. He also had a hobby of reading books. Okay. Okay. So, Ang completed his secondary school education at Victoria School in 1955. And he obtained his senior Cambridge. Today, is called GC, uh, O-Level Slug. Oh, okay. Uh, grade 1 certificate in the following year. Mm. In 1957, mm. he quit training to be a teacher. He quit? He quit. Okay. For a government scholarship to become a commercial pilot. Ah. Yeah, not bad lah. If you get this government scholarship all to become pilot. Ah, okay lah. But he was kicked out because he ignored safety regulations. Okay. Ah. Kind of not a good thing to do if you're a pilot lah. That's kind ah. of one of the most important things right, as a pilot. Yes. I ah, yeah lah. I mean, you know, it's like, you know. Actually, uh, a pilot got two jobs in it. Uh-huh. Fly the plane. Uh-huh. And fly the plane carefully. Ah, yeah, like, the, the carefully part he couldn't do. Ah. But fuck, Deflo could fly a plane, lah, bro. He, no, no, I'm not denying that. Deflo is doing loop-de-loops all, lah, with the not, Boeing 707. Push come to shove. Ah. Uh-huh. Anybody can fly Also, you shouldn't do while you're a pilot, ah. Huh? Also, yes, you really Push and shove, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anybody can fly a plane. Okay. I don't think anybody can fly no, a plane. No, no, if you had to, if you really had to, anybody can fly a plane. But can you fly a plane <laughs> safely? <laughs> You see, okay, okay. this is like why that. ah, this is why he got kicked out. <laughs> push, push, come to shove. Push, come to shove. I play now. Ah, sure. Ah. I'm then, doing it. I'm doing it. But you're not safe. Ah, and then you crash the floor, and then people ask you, "What happened?" You said, "Fly." You didn't say, "Fly." I, you didn't say, "Fly safely," right? <laughs> okay, so uh, then in 1961, he took part in the Singapore Grand Prix. Ah. A tourism event held at Old Thompson Road Circuit. Okay. So suddenly, from pilot, no safety regulations. Okay. Got kicked out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Fuck it, I'm going to drive car now. Okay. Okay, so he All joined right. the Grand Prix. This is not the F1, lah. I don't think that time F1, 1961, was F1. So this is what car? The. I don't, okay, first of all, I don't think this is a licensed F1 circuit, first of all, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and th- at that time, they didn't have the Singapore F1 one. Yeah, yeah. That time, they barely had a Singapore. Th- that time, they barely had a car. 
Uh. So, you know, it was that old, remember the old cars with the tires outside one? Oh, okay, 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 okay. okay. Uh, that right, that right, kind right. of car. Lah. Okay. However, Ang had run afoul with the law twice during this period. So, okay, I'm noticing something here already. Yeah. Mm. He doesn't care about rules and safety. No, lah. It's a good fella, lah. He's yes, a huh? government scholarship, lah. Okay, tell me what happened two times. Okay, so he was first charged and convicted of negligent driving after he killed a pedestrian oh, during an accident in 1961. My God, we were starting with that, ah. Uh. No, lah. I mean, look. I okay. Mean, okay. Who hasn't killed a pedestrian? Look, I'm not disputing that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's not what I'm trying to say here. What I'm trying to say is not right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, There are and some was things, Kavin, we shouldn't talk about on this podcast, I feel. No, no, here's the, here's the best part. However, uh, so he was first charged and convicted of negligent driving after he killed a pedestrian during an accident in 1961 and was issued a fine. Not jail, you know. Huh? Like you kill this player, right? Ah, now you pay me. Why would he not have gone to jail for that? No idea. Okay. The second time was 1962 when Ang was arrested and sentenced to probation for attempting to commit burglary. So 61, he he got fined for killing a person. Yes, for running over pedestrian. Fined, ah? Huh? Didn't go to jail. Yes. No, no, no need lah. 61. And then and then uh 62, he is now committing ro- uh, robberies lah. Burglary, yes. Okay. Okay. After the second conviction, Ang decided to study law part time. Okay, <laughs> because that's what you do. Is this the story of uh, a man who couldn't stick to doing one thing? Ah, uh, and and be- be- because everything he ever did, he couldn't do properly. Correct lah. So Ang decided to study law part time and wanted to go to England to obtain a law degree. Okay, but he became bankrupt in 1962. All right. Due to his lavish spending on driving racing cars and girls, how did they not? This is my question, right? Uh. Negligence, which resulted in the death of a pedestrian. Mm. How was his license not suspended? This is this happened in Singapore, right? Yes. So Singapore's I mean, always it, been a bit stupid, ah. Uh. They gave him a fine, lah. I guess that's fine. Oh, that's enough. Yeah. Okay. Of, you look in Singapore. There's an old saying. It's called uh. a fine is fine. Okay. <laughs> Right, that's an old saying, ah. Huh? It's an old saying. It's very old saying. Who since said that? Young, since young, they they use that one. That's 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 Lee Kuan Yew's family motto, eh? Hey? <laughs> oh, fine is fine. Yes, <laughs> fine <correct>. is fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, due to his hobby to drive racing cars, Ang had once resorted to stealing his father's money, which amounted to seven thousand dollars. Hey, who is this idiot, lah? You've been talking of this whole while. Why, why? His entire life has just been crime, is it? No, lah. He'll get better. He'll get better. Okay. I'm, I'm very sure. This man will see the error of his ways, okay. and he will immediately become a better person. Okay. No, not a single person listening to this believes you, ah. So okay, so he stole his father's money, which amounted to seven thousand dollars, and fabricated it so that someone else was responsible. Okay. Right. Later, when the truth was exposed, Ang's enraged father drove him out of the house. Drove him lah. So okay. <laughs> okay. So he's a very driven person. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay. Is this <laughs> is this you revealing the new character for Fast Ten? Ah? <laughs> yeah, is yeah, Ang this, this uh, is taking is, over? Uh, is Ang Dominic's Paul father? Sunny Ang, Dominic's mm. father, Dominic Toretto, because he decided that his name Ang was too Asian, so he needed yeah. to change it to Do- Toretto. So he changed it to it some some Italian name. <laughs> okay, so it was only because of Ang's mother, Madam Yo Bina, who reportedly always pampered her son, that mm. Ang was allowed back home. Okay, so the mother Namela, he killed one person only. Wa. So David saw. He stole Marshall. a bit of money on you. Ah, uh. he stole a bit of money. Seven thousand. Seven thousand on you. Ah, and in 1961, seven thousand is like, like four billion now. Uh. That is a lot. That's a yeah. lot of money. Yes. Uh, David Saul Marshall, a lawyer who once defended Ang when he was accused of theft, had once ex uh, has one had once expressed that during his years as a lawyer, he never met someone as arrogant and 
unrepentant as Ang, and he okay. felt regret for helping him escape the death charge. Okay, so this guy is a prick, lah. I'm very sure at this point he will yeah. see the error of his ways okay. and he will become a useful member of society. Okay, so this is when he's going to do something much worse now, right? Go on, go on, go on. So Jenny Chok. Okay. Uh, birth name Chok Cheng Kid. I'm already worried uh, about her. Uh, was born in 1941. You introducing her in this part in this part of the story. I'm very worried, uh, Gavin. So her father died when she was still a child. Ayo. Chok's mother later remarried another man, To Kim Sing. Ayo. And had Wait, another. Wait, what am daughter. I saying? Ayo. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I said it. Uh, and had another daughter, Irene To, in 1947. Okay. Chok was reportedly very close to her half sister. Okay. Chok only spoke little English as she went to elementary school for merely three years before dropping out. So this one also went since young. Ah, uh, when but she when... also ended it while still young. Ah, uh, while okay, okay. So so this one go to school since young. Ah, uh-huh. uh, uh, finish still young. Ah, <laughs> uh, finish also very young. Okay. Ah, uh, so. Uh, so it's so three years. So standard one, standard two, standard three, and then she's like, "I'm done." No, so that means you have to say, "My child only, <laughs> my my child went to school only when young." <laughs> In 1957, Chok married a man named Yui Chin Chuan. Okay. By Chinese practices, I don't know why they had to add that by Chinese by, practices. By uh, let me, say, I guess the traditional Chinese wedding style, lah. Yeah, but it makes no difference. They're married, right? Oh, no, no, no. Maybe sometimes you can. If you if you marry the modern style, then it's uh, not valid. Oh yes, ah, uh, okay. <laughs> because we are all proud Asians, right? Oh, fair, no, ah, uh. no, no. Correct, correct. It's Singapore, Samo. Wow, I you refuse never marry Chinese style. You marry Indian style. No, cannot. Oh, I refuse to go for any of my friends' weddings if it's not traditional, ah. Uh. Uh, so uh, by Chinese practices, and had a son and daughter with him. Okay. A few years later, Chok became estranged from her husband. Jenny Chok was a waitress at Odeon Bar eh? and restaurant at North Bridge Road. Eh, macam okay. No, I don't know okay. why it's very familiar. What the Odeon Bar? Yeah, I'm sure it's still there. Maybe. I mean, North Bridge Road is where we do comedy. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, uh, comedy masala. Yes, correct. Yes, it's, the it's... near the key, lah, right? Yes, near the Clarky. Yes. So the Odeon. Okay, I'm sure the Odeon bar and hotel would have been renovated by now. Lah. I don't know. I kind of have a vague memory of that place and that name in Singapore when I was younger, but I don't know if it would have been still around or not. I don't know. Well, I don't know. It could be. I mean, if you're one of the most. I mean, you know, lah, heritage and all this nonsense. They will mm, heritage mm, mm. everything. What it's like the Lee Kuan Yew. Yeah, Lee Kuan Yew's rabbit <laughs> also is heritage. What this point? Rabbit, ah. Huh? Rabbit. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. <laughs> the rabbit outlived him. <laughs> rabbit, it's quite good, lah. Well, not bad. Singapore it's healthcare not bad, lah. La, it's a demon. Uh, I see. <laughs> I, okay, you explain it like that makes sense. Uh, she was paid ninety dollars a month. Okay. Okay. So that uh, that is her main source of income. Okay. Uh, she survived on that and the income of ten dollars she earned in each on each day's tips from customers. Okay, that's nice. So, so a month ninety dollars ah, and ten dollars tips per day. So a month she, if she works twenty days, she gets twenty dollars in tips. Nice, not bad. Not bad, not bad. Two hundred dollars, sorry, in tips. Two hundred dollars, yeah, okay. She already had two children who lived with a husband she, whom she married according to Chinese rituals. Yeah, that one later separated. Okay. Again, you know, this was taken from two different sources. Okay. Both sources quoted the Chinese rituals. Yeah, okay. I don't know how. Does it is relevant play, to the story? De- okay, you've read the story. Mm. Does it is it relevant at all or to what's coming up after this? Maybe because of the Chinese rituals, that's where Sunny Ang sees his, the error of his ways. I you shut up and continue lah. It shouldn't have us. Okay, she, Jenny Chok and Sunny Ang met in 1963. Okay, he was 24 years old. She was 22 years old. Okay, all right. He was suave and educated. She mm. was naive and simple, mm. and flattered by the attention he gave her. Okay, she completely fell under his spell. She got kids, right? No, ah, she got two kids. Yes, but she okay. divorced from the husband. Separated. Okay, okay. 
From the first time they met, Kyok and Ang slowly develop a close romantic relationship that surpassed that of friends. Mm. Due to the charming nature of Ang, who was more educated and intellig- more intelligent than her, Kyok became completely attracted to Ang, who often mm. flattered her and paid close attention to her. They were only in a relationship for a short time before Chok was convinced that she wanted to be married to Ang. Okay, so this one happened quite quickly, lah. Quite quickly, lah. Uh, yeah. She okay, was tired okay. of the 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 Chinese rituals, lah. Okay. Oh, I mean, wanted, I I don't some. I don't see any mention of that anywhere there, but okay. Uh, and her wish was mutually shared by Ang himself. Oh, Kadal lah. Ah, Kadal lady lah. Okay. He would at times teach his girlfriend swimming lessons and scuba diving. He knew all this lah. I I'm very sure he knew lah. If not, he won't be teaching, right? I mean, I mean <laughs> no. For 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 an idiot like this, he could have just been like talking bullshit the whole time right? and thought of the wrong thing. Is she going to end up dying by drowning? Ah, <laughs> because he he didn't teach her properly. Shortly after he met Chok. Aya, Ang began buying insurance policies for her, where the oh, payouts no. would go to either his mother or to Chok's estate. Come in, come in, come in. Mm. Yes, come in. Mm. I, <laughs> I, I don't know where's the problem you're seeing in this, ah. Uh? No, no. I think uh. everybody at this point, including me, I think we know where it's going, lah. Where, where's it going? And Can they we... live happily ever after. Ah, okay. Thanks so <laughs> much, guys, for listening to episode thirty something. We find he it also. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Don't uh, continue. He also took Chok to a lawyer to draw mm-hmm. up a will, leaving her entire estate to his mother. Of course, he did. Look, I am very uh, upset that she. Mm. Didn't realize what was happening. Listen, first of all, look, it it happens. Like you know, when when you love someone, when a mummy and daddy love each other, okay, they buy insurance policy. You understand? Yeah. No. When <laughs> when when two people love each other very much, uh-huh. uh huh, the guy will go and buy out a life insurance policy on you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. And that's right. how child babies are made. Ah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Who? I mean. I guess it was a different time, lah. And it was she a different time, lah. Look, in nineteen sixty one, probably didn't buying... know, and oh, and like she probably didn't know, and this idiot probably made her trust him a lot. Oh yeah, I mean, look, it, look, listen, listen. Okay, you have to understand this. Yeah. In nineteen sixty three. Okay. Please, was I want to hear insurance. you defend premeditated murder. Go ahead. Listen, listen. In nineteen sixty three, it was yeah. buying insurance. Okay. In two twenty twenty one is eating ass, so it's two different things. It's still romantic. I, there is there is one <laughs> is a very nice uh, uh, pastime to do with okay. someone you care about. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay, the uh-huh. other one is a whole bunch of red flags. <laughs> I'm 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 assuming you're talking about eating ass, right? No, I no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Okay, so he also took Chok to a lawyer to draw a will, leaving her estate uh, to his mother, whom she did not know very well. I mean, because it's his mother, lah. I mean, you know, he's not gonna, you know, cheat you with the mother. Okay. So All by right. August nineteen sixty three, she had left Odeon Bar and was unemployed. Chok also had an accident coverage amounting to four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Right. Okay. I mean, you know, in 1963, lah. So that's a lot of money, lah. Okay. Yeah. So on August 27, this 19... is another accident, ah. From hmm? some, this is from some other accident, is it? What accident? Do you said the 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 accident coverage of 400 is he went and took this after the previous no, all together, lah. All together. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So all if if anything were to happen to her. Yes. Ah, uh, you know, four hundred fifty thousand pay out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah, is yeah. a good thing. You should always get life insurance. Uh huh. Okay. Just make sure you know who's taking it out on you, lah. Okay. Uh, you continue okay. first. Okay. So on on twenty seven August nineteen sixty three. I'm telling you now, yourself. I don't like this story. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like what's that happening. That thing is going to happen, lah. This has been the most obvious. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 we can see it coming from a mile away. Going to make me upset. Story we've ever had. <laughs> On August twenty seven, 
1963. Both Sunny Ang and Jenny Chok hired a boatman. No, you see, you mm-hmm. involve a boat. <laughs> Come in. <laughs> I mean, we've all seen this movie, you know, more than okay. once. Okay, okay. No, no, I mean, look, they hired a boatman, Yusuf oh. bin Ahmad. Right? Oh, God. He seems like a trustworthy guy. I'm sure he is. To bring it's not him to... I'm worried about right now. I'm, I'll, okay. I will tell you. Uh. Okay, so Yusuf bin Ahmad, to bring them to Sisters Island, mm. where they plan to go scuba diving and collect corals. Okay. Okay. Hey, it's a nice gesture. Okay? Sure. Sure. Ang brought along a guide rope, three air tanks, two pairs of flippers, mm? two knives, mm. a small axe, mm. aqua lung equipment, and a transistor radio along with him for his driving trip. Okay. Okay, so the waters around Sisters Island were known to be dangerous and deep. Okay, and then why you want to go there? Because the corals are nice. Lah. Okay, sure. I mean, look, right. if you want, you want you go proper place, lah. I mean, you know, dangerous deep is not a problem. No, no, it is. It is a problem when you have someone who just took out a life insurance on you. I'm telling you, it's going to be fine. Okay? And mm. we are also missing the fact that he has murdered before <laughs> by accident. I mean, sure, you know. Yeah, sure. Okay. Fine. Thirty minutes later, they reach <laughs> Sisters Island. Hmm. After putting up, after putting on her dive belt, and taking the axe, a knife, and a metal weight, Jenny Chong went into the water alone for the first time. Okay. With Ang having tied a rope around her to guide her. Okay. Okay. According to Yusof, the boatman, who had once brought the couple to another diving trip, he observed that Chok was not skillful when he saw Ang. Diving and chalk swimming. Okay. Ten minutes later. Okay. This all happened within one hour, Gavin. Yeah. So ten minutes later. Yeah. Chalk resurfaced. Okay. Oh. Now, see, see, I told you right. I told you everything will be okay. Nobody no, no, no. listens to me, you know. Which part of her resurface? <laughs> no, no, no. I she know how fine. these stories go. She, she's fine. After chalk resurfaced. Ang changed his girlfriend's air tank for her. Okay? okay. And allowed her to dive in by herself again. Okay. This time, Ang also did not dive in with her, even though he was swimming, he was in his swimming trunks. All right. Later, after testing his air tank, Ang asked for help from Yusof, saying that his air tank was leaking and the washer had a problem. All right. Lending a helping hand, the boatman helped Ang to improvise one. But it still failed to work. All the time when Ang and Yusuf were repairing the air tank, Chok was still underwater. Okay, with the okay. new air tank, lah. Ah, uh, she had the new air tank. Yes, yes. Okay. It was only then when Ang tugged on the rope and found that Chok was missing. Aya. Why? Go on. You go on first. You go on okay. first. He asked Yusuf where his girlfriend was. Oh yeah, ask the boat fellow who was helping you fix the air tank. What is that fellow going to know? <laughs> That's right. Hey, where's my girlfriend? Ah, huh? how hey, I your know? Girlfriend, lah. <laughs> hey, you ask me, I ask school lah, punde. You is your girlfriend. Why are you asking me for? You keep an eye out, lah. But Yusuf said he did not see her. Ang repeatedly tugged on the rope again, but to no avail. Yusuf then took the boat. To Saint John Island to contact the police, Ang managed to approach Jaffa bin Hussein, a guard who brought at least five fishermen who went into the waters around Sisters Island to search for Chok. Okay. Still, the search was fruitless as there was no sign of Chok. According to Yusuf, he and Ang did not go overboard to find Chok at first before seeking help. Similarly, Ang did not go into the water to search for Chok even though they had sought help from the fishermen. Why? Yusuf, huh? Why he he had a tank right with him? But he leaking what? Oh, but he uh, fixed it what? And Yusuf claimed that Ang seemed calm and not anxious. Okay. Yep. Yep. Which was strange when he, as Chok's boyfriend, was supposed to be extremely worried about his girlfriend's safety. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So, nevertheless, police were later contacted on the sixth day since Chok's disappearance. Okay. Several frogmen from the Royal Navy and the Royal Air Force Changi Sub Aqua Club went underwater to search for Chok's body, but it was never found. All right. Okay. The frogmen found a flipper, one flipper. Okay. Okay. Which belonged to Chok and worn by her before she went missing. Okay. Now, the flipper was found to be severed cleanly at the top and bottom, possibly by a sharp instrument such as a knife or a razor blade. Wait, wait, wait. Hmm. He, did, he, he did go into the water with her. No, he no. didn't go into the water with he her never at, went all, at any yeah. point. Yeah, at any point. An expert witness later testified that the loss of a flipper would have resulted in a diverse loss of equilibrium and affected the person's mobility. Since Jenny Chok was an inexperienced uh, swimmer and diver, she might have panicked and thus sw- got swirled away and drowned in the strong ocean currents present around the islands. Okay. Okay. So, police investigations began the moment when 22-year-old Jenny Chok went missing. Immediately, Sunny Ang became a suspect in the missing Chok. Yes. No, yes. 100% yes. No, but he didn't do anything. Well, he didn't. Wait, 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 wait. You uh, go on first. The police found that in less than 24 hours after Chok went missing, Ang had notified several insurance companies that Chok was dead and demanded for insurance compensation. Okay, you see how that could be taken out of <laughs> taken badly. I mean, look, I mean, listen. Look, it's not a good look, lah. It's not <laughs> a good look, I get I understand. Well, I'm just saying. Ang even tried to look for lawyers to rush up the coroner's report about the conclusion of whether Chok was dead or not. What? This guy, he's not helping himself, you know. I mean, he 100% <laughs> murdered this girl, yes. But, okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, wait lah, bro. I mean, cry for two days lah. Yeah, yeah. Not just the next day, like, show up in the insurance, like, yeah, she died already lah. No, he's like, knock, knock, knock. Hey, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> remember the remember the, the policy I bought uh, a, a week ago? Uh, a week yeah. ago? She did. How, huh? I mean, don't know lah, bro. Don't, you don't, you don't ask lah. Just, uh, here's my bank account. This aroused the suspicion of the police since it was not even concluded that the missing Chok was dead. And Ang went to demand the companies to issue payouts and that he, being an experienced diver, might conveniently stood to gain from the payouts of yes. the insurance policies he may have bought for Chok. Correct. Smart police. One of the policies had expired the day before. But Ang had extended it for five days, just three hours before the diving trip. Are you kidding? Ah? Yeah, just don't fucking renew a policy three hours before a diving trip, like you How? Dump up. How? How obvious is this for trying? Like he? Okay. No, and the worst part is he didn't. He didn't renew for another year. No, he renewed yeah. for five days, three hours before. Yeah. Okay, good lah. I mean, look, uh, the police then decided to reclassify Chok's disappearance as murder under yes. the pretext of investigation purposes yes. on, and on 6 September 1963 and started their formal investigations. Okay, all right. It was only on December 21st, 1964, this was August 63, 63 now December so 64, when police later, arrested yeah. Ang and brought him to court to face a murder charge the next day. Okay. Ang was initially discharged, but not uh, equal to acquittal okay. of the murder charge on de- 29 December 1964, as the judge did not accept the prosecution's request for more time to prepare for the case. I mean, yeah, correct. Uh, if I was the judge and I was reading this story and like, bro, <laughs> bro, come a, on la. a blind deaf person would know <laughs> you did it. La. Uh, however, the police re-arrested him again in an, uh, an hour later and detained him for a day before charging him with murder a second time. Okay, good. This yeah. time, the magist- magistrate approved some time for the prosecution to build their case given that it was uh, that it involved a possible but serious offense of murder and ordered Ang to be remanded at Utram Prison. I think the judge at that point, right, it, he just gave the prosecution, he, I think he just did it for shits and giggles. He's like, are you, you, you do lah, you do lah, you try. I, you know what? 
uh i'm kind of curious to see what you all come up with la do 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 nicely he yeah, on see on 26 april 1965 sunny ang stood trial for murder in the high court before seven men jury and high court judge murray botros okay presided over the trial this all singapore isn't it? this this all in singapore yeah, right? yeah singapore okay. but that time was malaysia lah yeah yeah uh senior crown counsel francis t xiao led the prosecution in, in this trial and the lawyer punch kumar swami punch kumar swami hired oh, nice. was hired to represent ang must no must in every lawyer, must be an indian lawyer lah in every community or or every once in a while there in every generation there'll be a few punches lah yeah i i realized that punch was very it was very a 60s name you know yes like punch kunalan punch yeah. kumar swami you know punch punch was like you know na- nobody nowadays is named punch no because nowadays if you if you go around telling your name is punch you'll get punched bro <laughs> got a lot of uh, got a got a lot of, of of idiots just trying to prove themselves that's the problem no like if i had a son i would name him punch no that is because you Actually, you know what you know what? Abuse. no no i i just thought of the full uh, name and i thought nah, yeah, yeah maybe not lah uh, punch kavin no punch kavin yeah <laughs> that will actually solve a lot of our problems ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, was hired to rep- represent ang in the trial okay. since the crime of murder was a capital offense in singapore mm-hmm. uh, ang would undergo mandatory capital punishment should the jury find him guilty okay. either by a majority or unanimous decision under the law of singapore all right okay okay i like how they put should like like there's a chance that he didn't do it <laughs> uh which was uh, so back then before the country's abolition of the jury trials in 1970 right right so the Wait, trial at singapore or malaysia uh, M- malaysia's uh, both are abolished same. singapore also does not have jury no no anymore why they also had a mona fendi case is it uh, i guess so No I mean no the 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 case for jury trials was was there, there was something like they said it's better just to have the judge do the thing jury all very mafan must okay. call seven people and then oh. you know this thing okay so so it's our our basic malaysian thing of uh, too much work lah yeah okay uh, even in in the uk i believe that it's not no more jury really yeah but this This problem that right? we keep on following a UK fellas and that that's why we're in our in this stupid state we're in now. The trial attracted much public attention you, due to the I, unusual I, I saw you uh, just uh, disengaging from that conversation just now. <laughs> yeah, just you know press the clutch, disengage, put to gear to. Uh the you trial You never at- want to talk to me about uh, <laughs> my views and thoughts of uh, the British Empire, bro. Uh no we will do we've done so many stories about the british empire uh. <laughs> yeah but you i sort of feel like you don't want to <laughs> keep talking with me about it you know i no i mean anyway the trial attracted much public attention due to the unusual case of a person charged for murder without a body okay yeah the prosecution case was based entirely on circumstantial evidence Xiao in his opening statement described the case in the trial. This is an unusual case in so far as Singapore mm. or matter of fact Malaysia is concerned. Mm. This is the first case of its kind to be tried in our courts that there is no body. Okay. However, Xiao did not mince his words when he stated that even if a body was not present, it did not mean that anyone could escape murder charges as it would have meant that some despicable killers might go scot free and escape punishment from the law yeah it only meant that the prosecution had higher burden of proof to achieve when prosecuting person for murder in such scenario sure. in the trial it was revealed that before her disappearance ang had helped chok purchase several insurance policies and stated that these payouts would be given to her estate or his mother whom he claimed would become Chok's mother-in-law once they became married. Okay. Okay. He also helped Chok he also helped Chok find a lawyer to set a will that when she died her estate would be given to Ang's mother. 
Okay. In fact, both Chok and Ang's mother had never met each other. This these insurance policies had a total coverage of four hundred fifty thousand dollars for Chok. One of the insurance policies had expired the day before uh, and was extended five days before the diving trip. These policies were purchased under the claims that Chok was an heiress of a chicken farm. Was she? No. Okay. I mean, it was just a claim, lah. So he went to the insurance. Hey, look, she is the heiress of a chicken farm. Now give her okay. insurance. Okay. Why the insurance agents people last time they didn't check, ah? Huh? That time no Google, what? You can't I go see. to like you know Facebook. No. And like, hey, she's I mean, not a chicken farm. She's a chicken, lah. I drive there, lah. Go and check, lah. Yeah, they got no time, lah. These people. Ah, okay. Again, right? Uh-huh. Okay, okay, okay. They got a lot of work, ah. Huh? Yes. Uh, however, Chok, as you know, only earned ninety dollars a month and had resigned from a job a month before her disappearance. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> had little money to pay the premiums for her vast amounts of insurance policies. Yes. The prosecution thus charged that due to his undischarged bankruptcy, Ang needed money and thus had a motive to help Chok buy the insurance. Later, solicited her an alleged murder. Yusuf bin Ahmad, the boatman who accompanied Ang and Chok in their trip to Sisters Island, became the prosecution's prosecution's key witness and testified about Ang's demeanor during the search for his missing girlfriend. This poor fellow is just doing his job being a boatsman, and then now he's roped up into all this. No, I know that fellow just you know that fellow is the, or the one Malay fellow who is trying to make money in Singapore by being a yeah. boatman. Yeah, yeah, and like you know suddenly like the fellow is like. Wait, wait. You, you will hear about more about that fellow later. I yeah. Uh... <laughs> uh, so the trial was also revealed. The trial also revealed a possible attempted murder made by Sunny Ang on Chok's life. Mm-hmm. Ang had once drove a car in Malaysia, returning from a holiday trip with Chok in Kuala Lumpur, but they met an accident. Okay. In which the the passenger side was severely damaged. How is this idiot being allowed to get behind the wheel of any vehicle? Ah, uh? his whole entire life has been nothing but like crashing cars and killing people with cars and like. Are we not crazy? once he couldn't even drive a plane. Yeah, <laughs> with not no once did anyone take away his bloody license. Ah, uh? this all could have been avoided, right? If the judge just said you are not allowed to drive anymore. So okay, so in which the passenger side was severely damaged, but Chop managed to escape unscathed. With a few injuries, okay. Ang, skilled enough to take part in Grand Prix, said it was because he was trying to avoid a dog. Sure, yeah, always blame dog, right? Mm. But before the couple's return trip, Ang took out two accident policies worth thirty thousand for himself and hundred thousand for his girlfriend. Oh, oh yo, <laughs> bro, <laughs> what are you doing? Rifle just simply like okay, where are we going? Kuala Lumpur. Okay, buy insurance first. This fella is like, if he takes her out on a date to go like coffee shop or so, he'll probably take out insurance. <laughs> Sunny Ang later elected to go to the stand to give his defense. Okay. Ang mainly argued that he was innocent, stating that Chok was the woman he loved and intended to marry. When he was asked why he did not go into the water to look for Chok, Ang only said that Chok might have been attacked by sharks. And said that the fishermen who dived in were more experienced. Okay. Ang also claimed that he let Chok go into the water first without basic, out of the basic courtesy of ladies first. Oh, that is not. That is the weakest fucking defense so, I've ever heard, lah. Such a stupid argument for you to say. Wow. In court, you know, it's just in like court. why? Why did you let your girlfriend, who is not a good swimmer, who is uh, never, uh, who who is probably a novice at diving, yeah, go first? Oh no, because ladies first, what? Ah, uh, right. <laughs> if Ang I also, was the judge, uh, and he uh, said that, I would have just like paused, look at him, and said, "Hundred twenty-six, huh? IQ? <laughs> yes, huh? Ah, uh, okay, okay." Ang also claimed that Chok had made good progress in learning how to swim and scuba dive. No, Which, you, how is your how how is your word <laughs> valid at any point now? Which contrasted with the many witnesses testimony about Chok's lack of experience and skills. Yes. Within one month I so can tell that. He said he put his mother's name in the beneficiaries list to avoid arousing suspicion should anything happen to Chok. 
Oh, so that worked. That worked out well, <laughs> I think. Good. There was very nice foresight of him, lah. I'm sure the mother was like, "No, lah, it's a good boy, lah." I don't think he name. told the mother so, bro. <laughs> Ang also steadfastly denied that he had motive to murder Chiao. Yeah, okay, sure. At the end of the trial in 19 May 1965, my god. But before the jury were given enough time uh, before the jury were given time to consider the verdict, Justice Butros summed up the case for summed up the case for the jury to consider. He made a total of 16 crucial points to the circumstantial evidence that mm. would prove Ang guilty of murder. Mm. Number one, Ang had motive to kill Chao for her insurance yep. since he faced undischarged bankruptcy and needed money. Number two, uh, on the day Chao on the day of Chao's disappearance, Ang extended her expired insurance policy for five days but did not extend his. Okay. Okay. Number three, Ang specifically chose to go scuba diving on a weekday. Yeah. Oh, oh. As it was a Tuesday on twenty uh, seventh August nineteen sixty three. Ah. Instead of a weekend, see that one also is a is a, is a big sign already because Singapore where got people got time to do this on weekday? Yeah, exactly. All. I mean, she had no work. He clearly bankrupt. So yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Since no other boats would be present in the ocean areas surrounding Sisters Island. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Number four, the waters around Sisters Island was known to be dangerous, but Ang knew and Ang knew it since he has gone there before with other people and not shock. Okay. Okay. Number five, Chok was inexperienced swimmer and diver, and she never went to such dangerous waters before. Mm. Number six, Ang said, Ang sent Chok down the water alone when scuba diving was not something to be done alone, especially given that Chok was a novice. Yes, you never go diving alone. Ah, huh? no, I know, and 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 he made her do it twice. You know. Yeah, Ang did not go down the water that day and had no intention to wet his feet. Number eight, Ang sent Chok down again by herself after she resurfaced, claiming that his equipment was not ready. Mm. Number nine, Ang was alleged by the prosecution to have tampered with the diving equipment in the eyes of the boatman, who did okay. not know about scuba diving. Okay. Okay. So Ang did not. Number ten, Ang did not take the initiative to use Chok's first air tank. Which still has a lot more than a quarter of air left, and still never used it even after the washer was damaged. Okay. For his tank. Okay. Chok's flipper was found with cuts that were conclusively caused by a sharp instrument like a knife. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ang acted calmly and unmoved throughout the search for Chok, unlike the usual expectations that a boyfriend would be utterly worried that if his girlfriend was missing. Ang calmly discussed about the tank's sinkability and floatability with the guard Jaffa, while the fisherman went in to help looking for Chok. Okay. So while the fisherman was looking for him, he was like with Jaffa there, like, "Hey, so the tank, he will, they will sink, right? Not float, right?" No, I don't think he even he even asked, bro. He was like, "Oh, the tank heavy, oh, bro. Tank heavy, oh, sink, oh, sink, oh, sink, oh." In less than fourteen, uh, in less. Then 24 hours after Chok went missing, Ang notified the insurance companies about Chok's death and demanded full compensation. Yep. His claims included Chok's death by drowning or by shark attack. Yep. Okay. Uh, number 15. Ang tried to achieve the payouts by looking for lawyers to pressurize the insurance companies and urging the coroner to quickly con- conclude the case of Chok's possible death, even if he could only get half the monetary compensation. Hmm. Mm. So it's number just a fast track everything, yeah. Number sixteen, the washer of the tank, which Ang claim had malfunction, was tested and found to be working perfectly. Of course, it was. <laughs> so while the jury took it, while the jury took their time to uh, reach their final verdict due to significance of the case, the courtroom where Ang's trial took place was full of lawyers, law students, and reporters witnessing the court proceedings. The seats were all occupied, and there were many crowds gathering outside the Supreme Court to hear the verdict. Mm. Two hours later, the seven-man jury returned with their verdict. Mm. It's in a unanimous decision. All seven male members of the jury determined that Sunny Ang was guilty of the alleged murder of Jenny Chiao, and that they recommended mandatory death sentence. In wow. accordance to the jury's guilty verdict, 
uh, Justice Patros found unguilty and convicted him of murder before sentence before sentencing phase. Uh, Justice Patros uh, verbally admonished Ang in court for the atrocious crime he committed. You, oh, double gunner scolding some more. Ah, gunner scolding, bro. This is the scolding. Ah, you, Ang, have killed this young girl Jenny, for whose only fault was apparently that she had the misfortune of falling in love with you and you give and give you everything she possessed her all cool. you killed her for personal gain it is a crime cunningly contrived to give the appearance of an accident and it was carried out with consummate coolness and nerve as at long last the time has come for you to pay for your penalty with your dreadful uh, for your dreadful dream shortly after Sunny Young was sentenced to death by hanging for the mm. heinous killing of Jenny Chiu. Mm. All people present in the court were told to stand while the mandatory death sentence was passed and the conde- uh, on the condemned murder. Mm. Ang's sister, Juliet Ang, then a law student, was reportedly devastated over the verdict and broke down in court, while Ang who maintained a cold, arrogant smile on his face throughout the court proceedings, became emotionless as the judge pronounced death sentence on him. Wait, so he was smiling throughout the the trial? Yeah. He was okay. I, he was like, yeah. Okay. Which died out to do. Okay. All right. A big crowd gathered outside the Supreme Court to look at the green prison van, which brought Ang away from court to, to Changi Prison to begin serving the detention on death row. After he was sentenced to death, Ang filed an appeal to the Federal Court of Malaysia against his sentence. In the appeal, Ang cited a miscarriage of justice in his case among 18 grounds of appeal. Okay. These allegations were mostly directed at the trial judge Murray Batros, whom he alleged had prejudiced his case in a way that denied him a fair trial. However, on 19 November 1965, the Federal Court of Malaysia decided that the evidence, including Ang's true motive behind the murder of Jenny Chok, was overpowering enough to prove Ang guilty and thus dismiss the appeal. Wow, okay. Right, so on October 5th, 1966, Ang's appeal to the Privy Council in London was also rejected. <laughs> Ang, so three countries told him to go to hell. Fuck off. Right? <laughs> okay. Ang, who was detained on death row in Changi Prison, made one final attempt to escape the gallows by appealing to the president of Singapore, Yusof Ishak, for clemency. Mm. Uh, Ang's 3,000 family members, friends and sympathizers also sent another clemency petition to President Yusof. I'm sorry, who are these 3,000? Among the 3,000, who the hell is sympathizing for him? His family members, friends, you know. He won't no, kill no, Nobody has 3,000 family members or friends. So it's mostly just people who heard the news, right? <laughs> yeah. Probably all those uh, fast car driving pricks like him. La. Probably. La. I don't, I don't okay. know. Maybe he has friends. I mean, look, yeah. if I was convicted of murder, would you... All people... I will 100% take the stand and say, before I even <laughs> hear what you did, I'll say you did it. <laughs> Bastard. Okay. See, this Because is, you this, probably this did. This is good to know, by the way. This yeah. is good yeah. to know so that, yeah. you know, uh, I won't call you lah. No, they will call me. <laughs> you don't have to call. <laughs> they will call. It's, they, all they'll do is they'll pick up the phone. Ah, yeah. Uh, ni saya panggil sebab uh, there's a two case mengani Kevin. I straight away say ah dia dia buat bang dia buat dia buat dia buat. <laughs> Confirm, seratus peratus dia buat. <laughs> Apa dia buat saya tak tahu. Sekarang you check up, tapi saya tahu dia buat. Listen to episode this, this, and this. Uh, yeah, I'll give them. Okay, listen. Ah, uh, 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 sekarang inspector pergi subscribe podcast saya. Ah, okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> Nama podcast apa ya? Eh? Ah, uh, the macam man. Eh, hey, kelaka. Hey, macam macam man eh? Ah, ah, uh, okay lah. I, I'll be like, you know what? Just call somebody else lah. If he says, I'll be like, call somebody else. <laughs> However, on 31st January 1967, President Yusof refused to grant Ang clemency and rejected both his petitions. President Yusof later authorized the execution to be carried out on Monday morning of the 6th of February 1967. Okay, okay. So during his time on death row, Ang was initially remorseless over the murder of his girlfriend. Mm. And he was certain that he would not be hanged after after the High Court passed its judgment on him. 
It was only when he received the news that the Privy Council rejected his appeal, Ang slowly began to resign to his imminent fate. Mm -hmm. He even broke down in front of his estranged father, Mm. whom he by then felt guilty for his misguided youth Mm -hmm. during a prison visit in 1966. Three days before his execution, Ang, who was an atheist, converted to Christianity and began to seek forgiveness from God for his crimes. Bit too late lah, bro. Yeah. He also expressed his regret to his family in his will made mm. before the hanging. I'm surprised he didn't get the, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, insurance A policy. policy taken out. No. Yeah, before the three, hanging. Three days before he got hung. A few days later, on 6 February 1967, the 28-year-old Sunny Ang was hanged at dawn. His sister, Juliet Ang, who was called to the bar not long ago, waited outside Changi Prison to claim her brother's body, which was later buried in an unknown cemetery at a funeral. As of today, the corpse of Jenny Chok was never found. Mm. It was presumably buried at sea. Mm. So yeah, that is the story of Sonny. Sonny That's Ang. That's ridiculous though. I mean, I just, yeah. I just love the fact that every time he went out, he, he got an insurance policy. He was a fucking insurance agent and buy insurance. It's like for someone who wanted to do a murder and get away with it, huh? Mm. He did every possible thing to make sure that all signs pointed back to him. No? Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, like, look, listen, if you want to murder someone, you buy insurance policy, buy. Don't say, I didn't say don't buy, buy. Yeah. But buy it months, years in advance. Yeah. Don't, don't buy, don't, ex- don't, you know, extend a, a policy for five days after it's expired. And in that five days, you commit to murder. This fellow don't know how to cover his tracks, is it? Yeah. Clearly, clearly he doesn't, right? Clearly, there's some rich brat who had a lot of money, right? Who didn't know how to cover his tracks. High IQ, it seems, right? But yeah, no, he's no, a he's obviously he's an idiot. Like he is. Uh, but also, he was bankrupt. So, I don't yes. know where the money was coming, what he was doing. Uh, I, it's just... <laughs> it's like, what, you know? He did one... He started doing wrong things. Uh. I think it all started when he got fined for that killing the pedestrian. Yeah. Right? So from that point, he's like, I can get away with anything. <laughs> I can get away with murder. Uh, a fine is fine. A fine is fine. You see? You see? He yes. thought he was going to get fined for her she, for, for her going missing during drowning. Which is fine because the insurance money would have covered the fine as well. Yeah. Yeah. You see? No, but he, I mean, look, listen, I'm sure that he had planned this out and he would th- he was thinking to himself like, okay, this is what I'll do, right? So I'll I'll buy the insurance policy, right? Mm. And then when I commit the murder, immediately the payout, I'm 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 gold lah. Like this yeah. he didn't know what insurance meant, is it? No, exactly. He was like in his stupid brain, he was like, Nobody's gonna suspect me. Obviously she would have died at sea, what? Because of an accident, you know? And exactly. then I can straight away go and like, bro, wait lah. A few yeah. months and then call hack. Yeah, exactly. Uh, cry a bit, lah. Moan a bit. You know, that's what you need to do. You need to cry a little bit. Like if I, if I, I mean, you know, if I murdered my wife, uh, my wife. If I, I mean, I, it would. I mean, I'll give it a few months. You know what I'm saying? Mm. No, we know. I'll give it a few months. No, no, then we I'll know. Go we know. out again on Tinder. You know. Yeah, yeah, we know. We've we've heard this many times also. I've told you this is why, like I mean, this this is why I'm telling you. The reason they, why I'm telling you the story is this is not how you're gonna do it. Okay. <clears throat> how 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 would no, you no, do the, it? The, I just know how we're not gonna do it like this. We're not gonna okay. buy insurance policy like three days before. Okay. Okay, we we we'll do we'll do more. Okay, you'll give it more time, lah. Ah, I'll give it more time. Okay, good. No, I'm glad, I'm glad. I'm glad you're saying all this in okay. the recording. You know why? It will it will save time for me going and giving a statement. Okay, okay, fair enough. Okay. Fair enough. Because I got work to do. <laughs> okay. what, work? what work you got to do? I got a lot of work to do. So when they call me after they pick you up, <laughs> I'll tell them, look, you can do one or two things. I can either spend, I can either waste my time and your time coming down to the station giving statement or you just listen to the podcast. You have a good time listening to podcasts. Also. Give us the views. <laughs> but also... Everything you need to convict is there already. <laughs> uh, just imagine in my trial, they're just playing snippets of us laughing. 
<laughs> so it's just all the parts of you saying how you going to murder your wife mm. right and then cut with you laughing me laughing <laughs> and then some stupid nonsense and then they just the poor person who has to edit all that together <laughs> Ah uh, yeah. Okay, like, Knowing them, uh, they they might just play one of the like really nice episodes <laughs> for the court to hear for no reason, you know. Got nothing to do the case. For no reason, no. That was just uh, for entertainment purposes. That one, the judge was like, ha ha ha. Nice, ah, uh, nice, nice. Okay, which one? If I were to ask you, which one was your favorite episode out of the thirty-four episodes we've had so far? I would say ah, uh, Enrique the Black. Enrique the Black. Yeah. Mine would have been ah uh, uh, Botachin lah. Yeah, for me it's it's Enrique first, and then I would say Botachin and Mona Fendi tied lah. Yeah, I I would go Botachin Mona Fendi. Botachin first ah. Uh. Botachin Mona Fendi, and then mm. after that is uh probably like ah uh, Tiger King. Oh okay 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 okay. But that was some crazy ass story, bro. That was the, ridiculous. And, and the, just, the, the, I like the Enrique the Black thing because it was very like. I like all those like from last time, last time, and then somehow it relates to us, you know. Yeah, no, I know. I like I know. that kind that of story. When I when I read the story, so when I when I saw the this thing, so I was like, how am I going to make this work? Because we do Malaysian stories, and this is nothing to do with Malaysian stories. At the end, only it comes back, you know. Ah, 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 yeah. ah. So yeah, it was it was it was interesting, lah. Anyway, <laughs> if if this is the first time you are listening to the Macha Band, please listen to the rest of the episodes. But uh, also, they, most importantly, please don't murder your significant others. Ah, uh, no! If you were going to murder your significant, no, others, no, 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 no! Don't buy the fucking insurance policy three uh, days okay. before you go to murder. Okay, also that, also that, but also the other uh, disclaimer is: don't listen to Kevin whenever he says if you are going to murder. Don't. <laughs> Also, that also, is not a nice thing to. Also, don't interfere with your goats. I'm very worried, ah, uh, Kevin, because what? of you, ah, uh. and your desires of uh, what you want out of your marriage. <laughs> Uh, this is going to stop becoming a comedy podcast and become a true crime podcast. You know, at some point, <laughs> without either of us realizing, it's going to become that. <laughs> and I don't know what to do. Okay, because they'll talk to me, because you'll be in jail. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I have to handle everything. So you will be a complice, why? Right? No, 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 no. I'll make you the complice. I don't care. The whole time I'm murdering, right? The whole time I'm murdering, I'm ah. just gonna shout your name. Ah, do lah, do do. Kiran, do. Kiran, Kiran. Okay, do. Just, just for, just to make it a complice. I don't know how. Correct. And then now, uh, when they come to me, and how come you shouting your name? I said, okay, you go and listen to the end of episode thirty-two. Uh, You'll see why. I let it out. <laughs>